Hello first year students, this is just a very quick homemade video to show you how to study law. First of all, these skills are suggested in the context of contract law, but they are transferable to other subjects as well. Now, for contract law, there are two books. This one, a thick one, Tritol, is what we think you must buy. If you think you can manage Tritol, reading and understanding Tritol, without an introductory book, that's fine. But if you need help with an introductory book to give you an outline before you plunge into Tritol, you can also get this book, which is McKendrick's Contract Law, which is a lot thinner. Then, two steps for the time being. First, before every lecture, you should have a quick read of the lecture outline. Not the whole one, you'll find out from the introductory DM, uh, the introductory handout, sorry, uh, what we're going to cover in each topic. So just read the bit that you need for that forthcoming lecture. The idea is that you cut things into bite-sized pieces so you can digest them. So here, in this first lecture, the lecture outline, you will find that we aim only to cover offer and a bit of acceptance for this lecture. Now, I'm going to just focus on offer to show you in detail how to deal with this. Um, first of all, before the lecture, you take the outline with you and you look at, you read through them um, and you look at the bits that we're going to talk about. In particular, what is an offer? What is the definition of the offer? You've got the relevant paragraphs all here, uh, the relevant paragraphs of the, of the textbooks all here already. So you get an idea of the structure of the topic. Now, for example, for offers, there are three big questions, A, B, and C here. The first is the definition of offer. The second is how to distinguish an offer from an invitation to treat, from something that is not an offer. And there are examples here in different contexts as to how you distinguish it from um, invitations to treat, and then when and where an offer takes place. Now, it will only take you about five minutes to, to read through this. After having an idea, then go, if you need to, go to McCandrick's book and you will find the relevant parts, the relevant paragraphs from here. Definition of the offer, offer and invitation to treat, so that's to distinguish between offers and invitation to treat. Now these paragraphs correspond to the lecture outline and here display of goods for sale. Now those are just a few paragraphs, so you're just talking about two or three pages, which is definitely manageable. Now read through them and as you read them, try to find and check um, against uh, these outlines because then that gives you a better idea now one thing about the offer oh sorry i should also mention if you think you can manage it um you can also read tritle but don't ask um too much for, of yourself for the time being maybe later in the term um, um you can start reading tritle even before the lecture for the time being just try to do it after the lecture Okay, now, having read these, you get an idea of what they are about. Um, and then you can go to the lecture, and at the lecture, you'll take notes. You'll find, I'm just going to pretend that I've taken some notes in the lectures. For example, um, in every topic, for every rule, we always have a general principle, a general rule, and that tells you what the law says. And then there are illustrations of the rule through the decisions, the cases. Then these cases all involves facts of these cases, 
reasoning of the judges and the decision of the judges. So when you go to the lecture, always listen very carefully for when the, when the lecturer talks about the general rule or the legal principle and discussions of the cases because these illustrations illustrate, show you what general rule means and tell you when there might be exceptions to, to general rule. Now these are very basic but for the time being these are the markers that you need to look for. Okay, so let's assume that you've got a full page of lecture notes on these. After the lecture, here's after the lecture and before the tutorial, what do you do? Most people would just rely on the lecture notes and not do any further reading, or maybe would just go and read a quick book like these. You should always, always read more because that is not enough to get a decent grade in the exam. Now, after the lecture and before the tutorial, you go back to this outline, which has now been fleshed out with these notes, lecture notes that you have. And then you take it really in bite-sized chunks. For example, here, what is the legal definition of the author? Then you go to Tritle, paragraph 2002, and read Tritle 2002. Because this paragraph, okay, author defined, gives you the details to that point on the outline. And then, you can flesh out and try to find points that are not mentioned here. And it's these details which will help you reinforce uh, your understanding of the subject. And I'm going to show you, for example, uh, how, for, how, to, how to further tackle a reading of the cases. For example, after defining the author, and showing how to distinguish an offer from an invitation to treat, you see display of goods in shops, Pharmaceutical Society of Great Britain and Boots. Now this is an important case. Whenever you have DM here, these are important cases that we expect you to read. So here, what you need to find out is exactly how this case illustrates the principle that display goods displayed in the shops are only invitations to treat and not offers. So, first of all, read Tritle dis Tritle's discussion of this case. And where do you find it? Display of goods. So, find the relevant headings. So, these are offers distinguished from invitation to treat. And then you will find shop display. Now, this is the paragraph that you need to read in detail. Now, Tritle is different from other cases, from other books, because it doesn't tell you, it doesn't name the actual case in the text, but you will find it in the footnote, and that is very important. Here, for example, you will find the footnote referring to Pharmaceutical Society of Great Britain and, and Boots. That's the case. Here's the footnote, footnote 46. So you go and find the text to footnote 46. Right? And here is the bit where this, these few lines are the bits where I try to discuss pharmaceutical society and boots. Um, so read this very, very thoroughly. Uh, and I would also suggest supplementing this with McKendrick. But by now, you will have to, whoopsie, by now, you will have to make sure that you don't just read McKendrick. McKendrick is just a prelude for you to help understand the, uh, the, um, the big textbooks. So here you see McKen McKendrick also mentioned Pharmaceutical Society and Boots. And here in McKendrick, you will find a summary of the facts and the reasoning and the decision.
okay so as you do that what you need to do is to get an idea of what the relevant information of this case are on the facts the reasoning and the decision now having got a brief idea you can then <coughs> Go and read the duplicated materials, in particular the excerpts there. Now this is Pharmaceutical Society and Boots. Now as you read through them, you will find that we've already provided teacher's notes to help you make the case note. So for every case in the DM, you need to make a case note of your own. And what you do is read through this using the guides that help you find out in which bit the facts can be found. For example, here, I've already told you, you can find the, the facts in this paragraph. So obviously, in the exam, you won't be able to regurgitate the whole paragraph to recite, I should say, the whole paragraph out. What you need to do is to use just one sentence or two, like in the country, to um, summarize uh, the facts. Um, so what you do as you read the DM, therefore, is to make case notes. So for example, Pharmaceutical Society and Boots. Your case notes will have headings such as these, the facts. And then I would suggest that you start with the decision, the conclusion, and then go and explain the reasoning for the decision. Now, if there are two judges, you split them into judge A's reasoning and then judge B's reasoning. If there's only one judge, you don't have to worry about that. And as I said, the, in the reasoning, you've got to find out the reason why the judges came up with this rule. Okay? I won't give the details here because that's your homework. But that's essentially what you need to do when you're writing a case note. Always facts, decision, reasoning. The decision really is the conclusion. Now here, when you read this, don't just highlight without doing the case note because that does not give you sufficient succinctness and precision for the purposes of your exam, your understanding. What you really need to do is to write summaries of these in your own words, in very few words. So after you've done the case note, carry on to the next case. And just keep going. Now you will find the, ne the next part is Patrick and Crittenden about advertisement of bilateral contracts. And there's no mark here that it's been in the DM. For cases such as these, you don't have to read the case, uh, you don't have to read the full case. You can just go to Tritol and or McKendrick, um, sorry, Tritol. Um, and if you like, in addition, McKendrick, in order to find out what the case is about. And then use one sentence, at most one sentence, um, to, lay, to write out what the case has decided. And that's how you prepare for it. If you do it in bite-sized chunks, it's definitely manageable. And try to, it's not that hard to read. Um, because doing it bite-sized chunks means that you take a break after two hours and um, after managing um, a, a, a bit of it. Now, so far, what we have done is to find out what the facts of the cases are, what the decisions are, and what the reasoning is. Now, this is useful, but you need a further part and that is critique of the cases. You need to criticize the cases. By that, we mean that if the judges, you need to critically examine the reasoning. 
If the judges did a good job, that's a good thing, but you need to be able to verbalize why it's good. If they did a bad job, you need to find out why, because then in the next case, in the next, you know, in a new situation where you have to apply the case, then you can argue that we don't need to apply in this case because so and so. Right, so I'm going to show you um, where you can find critique of the cases. Very often, that's when you really need to read Tritle because a rule is there for a reason. Now, when you read short books, all they're interested in is to give you a description of what the law is. They don't spend too much time telling you what the law should be. McKendrick is already a very good one, but it does not give you a lot of detail. Here, you will, you will see that Tritle is very good, much, much better. Because, for example, it talks about the general rule is well established, but the reasons given for it are not entirely convincing. Now, here is Tritle's critique. And here is when it goes through the arguments. One argument is so and so, and then it goes on to discuss whether the rule is good. Now, here, what you need to do is to home in really in detail and to summarize those arguments that are made by Tritol one by one. After doing that, evaluate them yourselves and see if you have further points to add. Most of the time, you may not because you're a first year student and Tritol has already done contract law for decades. Um, but still, you may be able to find something um, that is useful for you, then make a list of the pros and the cons and then form a view as to whether you agree with the rule because of the pros and how you can tackle the cons. Now, the pros and cons are important because what you want is to see both sides of the argument. In Chinese, you'd say you want them to be meaning those pros and cons should correspond to each other. Now, after finding out the pros and cons, try to think of a way in which you think a better solution can be found. And that requires a lot of thinking, um, but you'll be rewarded if you manage to do that. So this is just a very, very brief uh, video um, to show you um, how to study law. Thank you.